A seed planted on fertile ground brings hope that it will someday grow into a sturdy, fruit-bearing tree. This is the force of nature. This is the dream that the Worldwide Fund for Nature Philippines had when it began. When we started, I think uh, there were about eight staff in the office. Nasa Annapolis pa noon ng opisina, eh, sa Green Hills. Marching orders ko from Dr. Roque was to develop the marine program for WWF here in the Philippines. While I was implementing uh, mga marine projects, I was also helping Dr. Roque to secure that national organization status. In 1997, WWF Philippines was established as a national organization, starting with a project in the Turtle Islands, Tawi Tawi. My husband was the founding president of WWF, so it started as a, just a, an office, and it became a national organization. When WWF started as a program office of WWF US, then he was determined to make it a national organization that he himself would found as a and form a Filipino team to work on the spaces that makes us Filipinos who we are. We had Don Jaime as the first chair. Thanks to Don Sol and to Bataha, he put the name of WWF in the Philippine map. Thanks to JASA, he started getting other companies involved in supporting WWF. The first board meeting of WWF was actually in the Turtle Islands, just off Borneo. We all flew there. We wanted to protect the Turtle Islands. It's a marine sanctuary. Since then, it has successfully been leading various conservation projects to protect the most significant ecosystems in the Philippines. WWF Philippines works to improve Filipino lives by crafting solutions to climate change, providing sustainable livelihood programs, and conserving the country's richest marine and land habitats. I joined WWF in 1996 as the program assistant for a very small program then called the Marine and Small Islands Ecosystem Program. One of the major challenges was really how can people or the WWF team who was really trained to do conservation work for the animals to work in an integrated manner to do community work, development work, so that the conservation objectives are met. The Tubataha campaign was one of the first projects that WWF raised funds for. Most of the work of WWF is focused on uh, wildlife nature. Our work was primarily on the ocean. That was the background then. And there was one threat that somebody wanted to set up a seaweed farming all over this beautiful and largest coral reef in Southeast Asia in Tubatawi. So we rallied. We went around and tried to block this commercial venture and we brought again some folks to create a Tubataha Park office. The slaughtering of whale sharks was another emerging threat during that time. Activists cried for help, and the group raised funds, set up an office, and helped establish Don Sol as an ecotourism spot. Today, Don Sol is a first-class municipality. There are close to 230 uh, tourist rooms available during the high season. From a few hundred curious backpackers, Don Sol seasonal visitors now come has exceeded 25,000 visitors, more than 130 tourists per day. It was really groundbreaking uh, in the context of the work of WWF in the Philippines, but also for me personally, because I had the opportunity to witness how to design an entire project which involved local communities. As the organization started taking root, its work also began expanding beyond the sea and wildlife. The work of WWF Philippines extended to forests, rivers, mangroves, wetlands, and even cities, taking an ecosystem approach to conservation. The board decided to invest for a marketing team. That's the big difference. So the organization is in a position where it needed to build the other sources of income for the most local and so that the work of the organization can be sustained. Eventually, climate change emerged as a crucial environment issue which needed to be addressed. I felt that it was part of future-proofing WWF. We needed to work on, on climate and make sure we were ready to take on this very vital issue. 
one of the key strengths I think of WWF is really that advocacy and campaigning. What we did was beyond just, let's say, you know, going in the streets and having all those placards and mobilizing people. We really looked at what other avenues we can use the campaign. So through lobbying with key stakeholders and key decision makers. More programs soon follow. SDP, the Duna project, it started with Fisheries Improvement Project to, to achieve uh, MSC certification at that time. That's the now we are changing that MEC is just our milestone towards sustainability. Right now, the fishers, they are, are able to sit down with each other. Our fishers are now assertive. They trust the government, have recognized them. So it's really improved. We recognize na kailangan mo climate proof yung kanilang farms. How do you do it? Build greenhouse. You need to integrate easy, doable production technologies na similar to urban farming. So that, that's the technology of food shed came about. Now on its maturity stage, WWF Philippines has expanded its scope to four key areas. Habitats, energy, consumption, and food. It was about identifying opportunities within these interconnected areas while still being true to what it is and will always be an environment organization. It just started in 2018, the official No Plastics in Nature initiative. But previously, WWF has been implementing like environmental education programs that would um, include waste management sessions. And from those waste management sessions, it became like a campaign on plastics. And then uh, now it's like a bigger approach. So it kind of gave WWF Philippines like this evolution. Si WWF po, malaking tulong siya sa amin sa ubos. Kasi sa ginawa niya sa amin, nakilala kami. Unang-unang na yun, tumaas ang ano namin, yung appearance uh, bilang trabahador. Pati yung pagkababae namin, tumaas din yung ano namin, kalidad. Well, more than the notable activities and events that they have accomplished, one of the successes of the NYC its members. They are being recognized for their work in the field of conservation globally. By giving their voices and being heard, it creates a rippling effect and hopefully more young people will follow and be the next champions for the environment. I think one of the most powerful impact that NYC have the communities and the youth and schools that we've worked with is actually that anyone can be a leader no matter how young you are. So we had the uh, Project Ego Kids. So yun yung talagang project na araw-araw halos kami nasa public schools. Talagang babad-dumabad kami sa pagtuturo. The force of nature goes on as 25 years later was once just a seed has now borne fruit. From a small seed to a fully grown tree that has borne fruit, the story of WWF is about the people behind it. From communities, partners, and the WWF team, they are the force for nature. Working with people for a common cause. Yeah, yung pinaka parang unforgettable experience ko sa 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 dumson with WWF. I have seen many people all over the Philippines who have made a difference, from Batanes all the way down to Tawi-Tawi. Where certain young people have made a difference. Yeah, there will be problems, food, water, disease, but they're all we. People all over the Philippines that will make a difference. And I think that would be good. That's the good. I think that's possible. We should really take time out to see how this kind of work transforms our own selves. Because if we don't reflect, we will just do the same thing over and over again. Especially the mistakes. Yun nga, maganda example yung Baguan Island experience namin. Sila Joel, well, tamo sila Joel nung araw doon. Repisyo namin doon, blood, sweat, and tears talaga yun. But then, alam namin yung science eh. Alam namin yung biology ng pawikan. We, we knew that it will take 25 years bago yung mga nirelease namin hatlis makakabalik to nest. Sa loblo, hindi na natin makikita. But we have to do it eh. Kasi at least, alam mo, nakakontribute ka na. It's still something to look forward to eh. We have grown to become an independent national organization. And I'm hopeful and optimistic for the future of the Philippines. Unwavering, unstoppable, strong, epic, massive. Thanks to you, the forces for nature, the people behind WWF Philippines projects and advocacies. Together, there is hope for a better, more sustainable future where humans and nature thrive. <laughs>